L'argent là. Vas-y, prends. Tu peux Ah, l'argent, 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 oui. it's April so today I'm gonna show you how to get this look now this look is a recreation of the one that Romy Schneider wore in a film called Max and the Junkman it's a 1971 film directed by Claude Sauté starring of course Romy Schneider but there's also a Michel Piccoli and a few others and this film is a crime drama slash thriller there is criminal activity and robberies and a huge bust at the end and of course a little romance so Romy's character is a lady of the night she is a prostitute and she kind of gets herself into some trouble in the film along with Max who um, has some things up his sleeve <laughs> Anyways, but I absolutely adore her style in this film. She has this really beautiful, soft, wavy hair, either parted down the middle like I have here, or off to the side. By the way, this will also include a hair tutorial, so you can do this. And her makeup is beautiful. It's kind of this grayish, blue, smoky thing. And it's like color from lash line to brow bone. And I really, really love a heavy made up eye. For my angels with hooded eyelids, this is going to be a really great tutorial for you because um, I think it'll look more accurate on your eye shape. But if you don't have hooded eyelids, fear not. Go ahead and slap on the bluish gray eyeshadow. Let's just say just it's, it's the essence of vibe of mood. So you don't have to have someone's exact features to wear the looks that they do. And also something that I want to mention, the lip color is a little bit different depending on what scene of the film you want to base your look on. I decided to go with a more coral, a warm coral look, so have that noted. And yeah, oh, and one more thing. I wanted to dedicate this video to my beautiful and lovely friend Celia. Um, you might know her on Instagram as Celia Bo, but she's basically the one that like inspired me and encouraged me to make a tutorial on this look. Because I had been eyeing this look for a while, but I was just like, eh, I probably won't do it. And um, so let's say it was a bit of a requested look. So I want to dedicate this video to you. I love you. <laughs> And yeah, enough of me rambling, let's get on to the tutorial. <laughs> Starting with my hair, I am using a hair straightener and I am curling the front pieces of my hair forward and then I'm rolling them up and then I'm going to pin them to cool. And once again, we're going to go ahead and do this with all the hair that's framing the face. I am really focusing on these front sections. I feel like these are such a crucial and key point to the look. I really love how the soft waves cascade around Romy's face. And pinning them is very important as well because it lets the curl set 
properly so you get a longer life out of it. And now we're going to quickly curl the rest of the hair. I am going in alternating directions. So I'm curling backwards and then curling forward. And I'm going to go ahead and continue this until I get to the other side of my head. Something I'd like to mention is that you don't need to use a hair straightener. If you have a curler, you can go ahead and use that. I just find that the hair straightener is a lot quicker. I noticed that the top was looking a little flat, so I'm grabbing my straightener and I'm curling a few of the top pieces just to add a little bit more body to this look. Once your hair has fully cooled, you can gently take out the pins. And I'm going to use my fingers and a comb and start brushing through my curls just to kind of soften them and get them a little bit more fluffy. And I'm also going to tease up at the roots a little bit just to get a little bit more height to this hairstyle since my hair tends to lay a little flat. And then once again, I'm just going to use my comb and tease this front section, make sure that it's sitting a little high. And then smoothing and creating some waves, just kind of brushing over my hand. And now I'm going to take a little bit of mousse and I'm going to apply this to the front section of my hair to kind of hold that shape. And then it's also going to smooth the rest of the hair out. And if you do need a little touch up, go ahead and feel free to do that at this point. And that's about it for the hair. Moving on to makeup, I'm just going to go ahead and mix up my foundation color. Use a foundation that's a little bit more matte, but anything that you have will work fine. And I'm just taking my little Real Techniques beauty sponge and stippling that all over my face, making sure that I have a nice, even coverage. Since I tend to crease really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and set my under eyes as well as around my nose and the corner of my mouth and eyelids and just any little places that you tend to crease would be good to set right away. And last minute, I decided to throw a little extra powder under my eye to catch any fallout. Here, I am taking a white shader brush and a steel grayish blue eyeshadow. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this onto my eyelid, lash line to brow bone. And I kind of want to make sure that the outer edge of the eye is a bit rounded. And go ahead and run some of that on your bottom lash line as well. The makeup at the time was a little bit more chalky and powdery, so here I am just taking a fleshy toned face powder and that same shader brush and dusting that over the eyeshadow that we just laid down. Picking up a charcoal gray eyeshadow on a blending brush, I'm going to go ahead and start working this color on the outer corner of my eye, bringing that up towards the tail of my eye and still keeping that rounded shape. And I'm also going to sweep some of this color into the crease just for a little more dimension. And I do say that this looks a little bit better on hooded eyelids. And here I am, I'm just kind of increasing the intensity. And with a smaller shader brush and that same eyeshadow, I am now running this under my bottom lash line. With that same brush, I am picking a frosty medium toned blue eyeshadow and dusting that all over the eyelid to help blend the look out. And next I'm taking a little tiny shader brush and a pearlescent white eyeshadow and putting that just underneath the brow and this is going to help lift the eyebrow. And with that same shader brush and that fleshy tone shadow earlier, I'm just going to pop that onto the lid because I feel like I lost some of that color. And with a little angled brush and some of that great eyeshadow we used earlier, I'm going to run this onto my top lash line while blending out towards the outer corner. As you can see, I am keeping it close to the lash line and then diffusing and softening the line so it doesn't look super harsh. Brushing off that excess powder. I'm just running a brow gel through my eyebrows, but you can certainly fill them in if you need a little more help. But a thinner brow actually makes this look. Go ahead and curl your eyelashes and apply heaps and heaps of mascara to both your bottom and top eyelashes. Try to get as close to the root as possible and make the bottom lashes very spiky.
And with a very tiny shader brush, I'm going to take a champagne satin finished eyeshadow and I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the inner corner of my eye. Now I'm just going to throw on a pair of flared false eyelashes. Take a small angled brush and some matte black eyeshadow and go ahead and touch up the top of your lash band so that no glue is peeking through. Now go ahead and throw on some nude eyeliner onto your waterline. I want to add a little bit of warmth and dimension to my face so with an angled face brush and some bronzer I'm going to pop this into the hollows of my cheeks blending this towards my hairline. This is really going to add a little bit of depth and warmth and just kind of pull the face together. With that same brush I'm going to take a coral blush and I'm going to go ahead and pop this onto the tops of my cheeks once again blending towards my hairline. Next I am taking a coral lipstick. That's Admittedly a little too pink, but go ahead and just fill in your lips however with that. And I'm using a nude lipstick to kind of warm that up and using my finger to blend and melt the two lip colors together. Now to really get this lip color right, I am taking a metallic finished coral lip color and once again using my finger and melting that into our existing lip color. My hair had gone a little flat, so here I am just zhuzhing it up with my hands, doing a little extra teasing and preening. And I think we can call it a day. We're all done here. And this is it for the completed look. Now, I have had a lot of fun wearing this look. I feel very sultry and sexy and kind of sophisticated in this look. I love blue eyeshadow and I love when eyeshadow goes from lash line to brow bone. Um, I know that some people are afraid to put color up to the brow bone, but I love it. I think it looks great. And I really like this coral lip. I usually steer away from this lip color. It's just not my thing, but I'm like really feeling it. And this hair. I feel like B.B. Buell in this hair, which I should totally do like a 70s Playboy B.B. Buell look. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But um, yeah, I just it's a really easy look. I think that the beauty with the doing makeup from like the 60s and 70s and 80s or any like older makeup look is that the quality of the makeup back then wasn't that great so like if your skills aren't up to par it's still gonna look really good because I mean it's better than what they were working with back then you know but uh, yeah if you do this look please let me know tag me on social media I always get so happy to see your guys's recreations it really like makes me so happy you guys have no idea and um i appreciate all the love and the comments that i get from you guys you guys are awesome and you know how to make a girl feel real special <laughs> and um yeah i just really wanted to say thank you to all of you and i read your comments and i've listened a barbara Steele tutorial will be coming up in the near future so get ready for that and yeah, thank you for watching. As always, I will leave a list of all the products that I use down below in the description box. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave those down below as well. And Celia, I'm talking to you. Please do this look and then tag me in it because I want to see it. And then you should totally do like a cute little dance along with it because I enjoy those videos. <laughs> Anyways... I feel like I made this weird and this outro is kind of long already. So thank you again for watching and until next time.